How's everybody? Sorry for the glare. It's all my it's my steering wheel. It's the nice chrome or stainless steel. <laughs> anyway, as I was eating dinner this evening inside the Petro at the Iron Skillet, there was another guy sitting, another driver was sitting at the counter, and we got talking about um just trucking in general but he got he said he been at this company he's with for three months really likes it i asked him what he did before he's like oh i was the owner operator and rates were getting so bad throughout last year that i couldn't make it i had to give him a truck back he said he had brand new peterbilt 389 and it just he couldn't afford it couldn't afford the insurance or none of it and kept going back to rates and couldn't run for a dollar something a mile and all this stuff. And couldn't find out, he pulled the drive van. And that's the first problem right there. And I, instead of though, I don't get pointing my finger at somebody and say, man, this is where you were all did everything wrong. He was explaining, but what I did instead is tell him my experience tell him why i've succeeded i fell sometimes did some rough weeks but um i try to overcome that and not let that happen so i i let i use my own experiences to show him where his mistakes were at and how he could have got past that but it stood to end he still could not admit that he fell because of himself, because of laziness, because he didn't want to uh, do certain stuff. So whose fault is that? Well, I don't want to do that. Well, then it's your own fault because you could have done it something different and made money and kept that truck. Instead, now somebody's your boss and telling you where you have to go, what you have to do and how much food you're going to put in your kid's mouth because now somebody else is in control of your paycheck it's crazy and that's exactly why i am an owner operator i want to be in control of my own destiny i want to know at the end of that week whatever my truck and trailer has grossed it was because i took the initiative to make it that way well i didn't have to hope somebody else um, um, got me enough loads or the right loads so I can make a certain amount I do it I take my time every single day I go through I have this that binder sitting that black one I go through that every day sitting on my tablet looking past customers that I may have struck up conversations with so, oh, maybe I need to call on them that's all I do and it works it works a lot of more times and i'm surprised at how many times it works so i can't blame the rates if i fail it's because i didn't take the initiative and i've done driving i've done reefer i've done tanker i've done step deck i've done flatbed i've done livestock done rgn i've done a lot of um trucking and some of them you just it's hard to make money and like you that's why i don't do them because they're if you look around this truck stop i'm at the petro in remington indiana it is full and can you guess what kind of 85 90 percent of the parking lot is dry vans oh well and reefers obviously i don't know which i can't see exactly what each one is but they're dry van and reefers. So what's that tell you? The competition's high. There's a few tankers in here. There's not a lot of 55 ton RGNs. There's not a lot of three plus one RGNs. There's not multi-axle RGNs laying around in here. So you know what that tells you? Where's the competition at? Not in my market, which we still have it because you have ATS, Landstar, all these big 10,000 million brokers uh, trying to get customers at these places um, 
Warren specialized. You have a lot of, there's competition, but they're, they're targeted towards certain industry of truck, of heavy haul. And some people just don't like dealing with them. And, uh, but that is where the problems ensue. If you're buying a brand new Peterbilt 389, um, Trust me, I know how expensive they are. I have one. And I know what I need to make every single month. I know what I need to gross to make sure this truck's paid for, which isn't, it's not, I easily can make it in a month. So I've, I've never missed a payment on the truck, that's for sure. But what I do is every week I set a certain amount aside for the truck and the insurance so set it aside and then pay it at the end of the month so there's some times when i haven't been able to pay myself in a week but i still had to take that out and where's that going to come from it comes from my account so i just put it in another account and now i gotta make that up but i still just choose to do it that way it's disciplined so i know it's just always there and that's like the guys that fail they don't seem to take the initiative because one thing that you must think of yourself as more than a truck driver is your entrepreneur all business owners i don't care if you're in trucking or what you are entrepreneur and entrepreneurs should always have one thing in common. They have the ability to solve problems and find the solutions and be better than somebody else with it. That is what every entrepreneur should have in common. Some of them seem to have the solution for a split second, but then once any other problems arise, they don't know how to overcome them. For instance, like buying a truck. There's one problem that you solved for somebody. You bought a truck. But now what are you going to do? You were so used to being a company driver. You didn't realize everything else this and takes to run this truck down the road. You didn't realize that you got to start calling on people and building relationships with people. I can't stress this enough. Relationships are everything. Just put that in your head and don't forget it everything you must be able to build solid lasting relationships with people if you're not a people person then you might not want to uh, be in business for because uh, most businesses you gotta where customer service comes in I would say there's some businesses that you can be a grade A you know what and do just fine but if you fail then that's obviously the reason why you fail and with the way I do it is I when I deliver a piece of equipment somewhere like I do a lot of stuff directly from John Deere not everything because that's another thing you can't put all your eggs in one basket you cannot get the majority of your profit from one thing. I try to make it about 25%, give or take. John Deere, it's a little more because I know John Deere is not going to be going bankrupt anytime soon, hopefully. And um, so it's they're pretty good. So generally, I might do 35, 40% of all my loads are from John Deere. It just depends. The time of the year, I guess. And that might be hot. If I'm thinking throughout this month, it is probably 40% right now. But it's been slow in other aspects. But anyway, I uh, so when I deliver new equipment, I go into some of these places that I've been to often enough. And I've already talked to some, I build relationships. I don't go in there ask and say like, oh, how do I get set up with do, hauling some of your equipment from the, all your different stores or picking stuff up from you that's not directly from the plant. Like you don't go in there doing that. Like I'll go in, 
the guy that sometimes, like I usually don't need help unloading, I unload the machines myself. And I'll still see somebody out in the yard, I'll talk to them, introduce myself to them, and just build that rapport with them. And I'll go inside, find somebody sitting at the desk, just talk to them, strike up a conversation. And just what I do. And you do that often enough, then you um, can usually use that person to get to the person that is in charge of transportation, that, that is the, the person you need to talk to. And it, it, it takes time. It's not gonna happen overnight, but say one day after you built a good relationship with this guy, now you kind of have this kind of bond and trust. You can say like, man, what is it? Do you, who's the person I would talk to to get set up with for doing loads for you guys every now and then? Like, oh yeah, it's this guy. Then when you go to that guy, you can say, yeah, so-and-so gave me your name, told me you're the man I need to talk to, or the woman. And now you have that other person as a stepping stone to this person. So now you're already a step higher than everybody else that always comes to them asking, because now you built this relationship with somebody that works with them, one of his coworkers. So that's the door you get open. And sometimes it works. Sometimes they're like, eh, um, not really interested in that right now. But you still are in their head and you get their cards and ask them their name. And this every now and then you might call them and say, have, have you thought any more about that? Like, yeah, matter of fact, can you go down there and get this for me or whatever? That's just how it works. And I am actually pleasantly surprised that it's worked a lot more often then I have failed at it. It's crazy. I uh, I don't know how. I'm just, I guess, that charming of an individual. <laughs> but you just can't let somebody be in control of what you're making like that. Like, you have a truck. Step out of the comfort zone. Be a people person. I am great with talking with people. And for some reason, people do like me. Like, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a nice guy, or I can be. It's just probably the way I carry myself, too, I guess. But, um, you, if you're doing brokers or spot market off the load board, you're going to fail. Like it's going to be really hard because you have no control of what those rates were. You have no clue about any of it. You don't even know who they're all for half the time because you're just doing it for the broker. So I don't like living that way. I don't like working that way. I just, I don't like doing it. I want control. I want to know who um, I'm bringing it to. And like, I just want to know that kind of stuff. Like I'm saying, obviously you'll know the name of the company, but I just want a better um, relationship with <clears throat> what I'm doing. So you can't use rates and say, oh, I was pulling this guy's dry van. I don't know, let me look at one. Covenant Transport. And now their rates are, are probably so set in stone with some of their customers, there's nothing you're ever gonna do about it to make more money. Cause you can only run a certain amount of miles every day. You can only do so much, yet you're gonna still make the same amount of money. I don't have to do that. I, <clears throat> I mean, man, I go bug people sometimes. Like, man, have you, I thought you said you were buying some equipment. Like, damn, you need to get on the ball. But those are people I've built relationships with. They're like, all right, I'm going to this Richie Brothers auction. I got you. And you just keep going from there. And you just got to stay on it. <coughs> Hopefully some of you um, get some kind of value out of this. Don't just, don't fail at nothing. This is coming from somebody that had cards stacked against them. And I overcame all that. I don't use that as an excuse. I don't, oh, I was in prison all, almost all my chill. Like I grew up in jail. I grew up, I developed mentally in jail. I mean, from a little kid until I was in late twenties, I, I could make all the excuses in the world, but I choose not to. 
and because the excuses just get you nowhere makes you look like a fool when you keep making excuses so just don't if you get one thing out of this video remember relationships are everything